Today, the internet is reeling from the PlayStation 5 Pro reveal, not from the feature set or the look of it. No, it comes down to the price point. That coming in at $700 base. That's not including a disk drive or the stand, which, funny enough, Sony decided to make sure was noted on the slide that the stand was not included. If you wanted to get both of those, technically you're up over $800 for the console, but for the sake of just this video, we'll say, okay, $700 for the all digital PlayStation 5 Pro. And this has brought up the conversation around the future of console gaming, because if you consider sort of where we are right now in this generation, roughly halfway through for Sony, it does make you start to wonder, okay, four years from now, how is that PlayStation 6 going to look? So I wanted to talk a little bit about that here today. If you guys enjoy the video, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. And I know it does sound weird to start talking about the PlayStation 6 right now because we just had the PS5 Pro revealed. And again, we're still like four years off, most likely from Sony moving to the new generation in, we'll, we'll say 2028. I think that's a, a fair assessment at, at this time, an eight year life cycle for the console. Although who knows what happens with Microsoft? They could start to move things along a little faster if indeed they do launch the next generation in 2026, as some have speculated around that possibility. But this really has been a reveal that has not gone over well online because of the price point versus what you're getting from it, which it was it was very difficult to get the message across when you started showing games on stream. I think that's very clear. You got to zoom in. And even then it's like, I mean, I, I, I guess the, the frame rate to me is the bigger part of this because there are games that I've seen, especially recently on the PlayStation five now that uh, they struggle whether it is with frame rate or with fidelity with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth when you put on performance mode it was uh it was quite blurry so in that regard look if it if this can indeed get us to a position where fidelity mode is basically at 60 frames per second it might even look sharper with this PSSR that, that they are touting, then great. That is the enthusiast experience that they are attempting to market and sell here. My only thing with this, really looking at it, is indeed the, the pricing landscape that we are in currently for consoles. To me, a game console was always that alternative to, we can even say PC gaming, even though we started to see more and more parts basically off the shelf just about going into PCs versus back in the day with, you, you can look at that generation with the PS2 and the GameCube especially, where yes, the Xbox did use like kind of off the shelf components from PCs just about, right? But the the PS2 with the emotion engine chip was was interesting. The GameCube with its setup was also different. So you didn't necessarily know what each one was capable of. But now that we have just gone more and more to having PCs in these little boxes and PC gaming is becoming more and more accepted, we do see these price points getting up there. And we launched recently with the, we'll say the PS5 and the Xbox Series at a $500 mark. We had the $400 uh, PS5 five digital and then the $300 series S but most people I would say were probably looking at the the disc based PS5 and then the more powerful Xbox Series X and now we are seeing these these companies wade back into the territory of PlayStation 3 $600 pricing in 2006 if you go by inflation technically the PS3 is like over $900 now but again, if you start adding on what it had then, which was a disk drive, I mean that that was in the system. Now you're at 780 for the uh, for the PlayStation 5 Pro, and in some regions it's actually above 900 dollars then when you put everything together. So yeah, we're kind of back to that point with Sony showing up on stage with this massive price point, which we backed away from, and now it appears we're heading back towards. So that kind of goes against the idea of game consoles. They usually play into the idea of convenience and actually saving quite a bit of money for what you get in terms of performance. I still look back on like the PlayStation 4 Pro, even at $400 when it came out. I It, it provided 4K gaming as heavily upscaled and they added on performance mode in some cases, but it did feel like I was getting more going from the base PS4 to the PS4 Pro versus what I'm seeing here for the price difference of, I mean, if you look at the PS5 with the disk drive at $500, going up to the PS5 Pro with the disk drive at <laughs> $780 of a $280 difference. And it makes me think about the PlayStation 6. 
because the PS5 was more expensive than the PS4 Pro by $100. Where are we going to be when the PlayStation 6 releases? Is that, we think, going to be a $700 system outright, like baseline? Or are they going to wind things back down to, say, it sounds crazy now, but $600? Yes, that's winding back down to $600. Or are they really going to go for it? It'll be even more expensive. And, and I mean, think about it. That wouldn't even have a disk drive then. So, this is a very strange spot to be in right now for consoles. Will Sony be able to normalize an enthusiast approach and people expect to go into the next generation spending way more than we ever have on game consoles? Or is this the moment where some people do start looking around, realize that more and more games are becoming available day one even on PC and they just decide to buy a pre-build or even just put one together themselves. From my experience in retail, I will say there are many people out there who just don't want to play on PC. They don't want to deal with it. They just, they want to sit down on their couch, turn on a system by just pressing a button on their controller, and they get into a game in a minute or two. And that's it, right? That's all they want to deal with. Maybe they sit in front of a computer for work eight hours, ten hours a day, and they don't want to sit on in front of a PC again when they get home. So that I can understand. But it does still make you wonder about some of the the benefits of console gaming almost going away to a degree. It's uh, it's it's a very odd place, as I mentioned, odd point in time. Because the other thought about this for me is the the jump from the PS4 Pro to the PS5, while load times were, I mean, reduced if not eliminated, the graphical jump wasn't as significant as it could have been if we had that base PS4 the entire way through and then we upgraded to the PS5. That would have been, I think I think most people agree, a significant jump then in terms of speed, visuals, everything. But now we have this PS5 Pro existing and what's the jump going to be like from that to the PlayStation 6 in 4 years because I just I don't I still don't see 8K making that sort of a run right now and it makes me think that Sony would have to look outside the box a bit more for what the next system would really have to offer over just shinier details and things being sharper on screen. I guess in some aspects, it even opens the door for Microsoft and kind of Nintendo, although Nintendo, we still need to see what they're going to do with their next system. But at this point, if they show up with a $400 system, that's going to look outright cheap compared to the competition, you could say, with in the entertainment space anyway, even though they don't they pretend like they don't directly compete. It's still limited amounts of dollars out there to, to compete for. And a $400 price point, say, for the, their next system will just look inexpensive compared to a PlayStation 5 Pro or even the Xbox Series X that's out there. The the 2 terabyte model at, what, $600? Uh, so it's it's interesting the way that it, it seems like the, the next generation systems could be sort of diverging from their price point and their feature set. And that's going to also bring us to Microsoft as they most likely would be up next with either a handheld or a home console. And how will they be able to price that out is it's going to be something to watch. But it just it seems like a massive shift has happened here this generation specifically where we are seeing these high price points becoming more and more normalized. So let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Technically, the PS5 Pro is unnecessary for most people because the PS5 as it is now will play all these same games. But it does make you wonder about the direction of Sony currently as a gaming company, especially when they don't feel the need to put a disk drive in with their $700 system. Will the PS6 have a disk drive by default? I'm going to say probably not, and that really, to me, will push us completely even into the all-digital era. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.